Hello and welcome everyone in another episode of Researcher Celebrity. Today we have Dr. Praveen Goyal with us as our Researcher Celebrity. A little brief about Dr. Praveen. He has done his Bachelor's in Life Sciences from Kurukshetra University, then pursued Master's in Biotechnology and Molecular Biology from CCS Haryana Agriculture University, Hisar. He joined ICGB as a Junior Research Fellow to enjoy or we can say to check the pa patience of our research and he's worked there for almost three years before joining a PhD program in Applied Bioengineering Services at VIB Belgium. Then he got an AMBO long-term fellowship and went to Sweden at University of Gothenburg with an AMBO fellowship and then he joined in India at INSTEM having a reputous Fellowship of Early Career Fellowship by Welcome DBT India Alliance. And currently, he is serving as Senior Scientist at CSIR National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. With this brief introduction, I would like to welcome Dr. Praveen by saying thank you for accepting our invitation. And we look forward to this conversation today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Actually, it's my pleasure to talk to you. So, we always start our conversation with our researcher celebrities that how and when you decided that you want to become a researcher? Maybe not a researcher, like I think um, most of the life science people go through the same stuff that we want to become doctor first. So after 10th, I asked I want to become a doctor. 11, 12th, you study your biology. But then, of course, we couldn't get qualified for MBBS. And then I did BHD. So until that time, I was not thinking about, you know, doing research as such. So then I went to do my master's. So my idea was after MSc, I will do some, you know, some industry job and it will be good. But when I moved to actually uh, ICGP, then I just got into this, you know, doing research. And then when you do some experiment, you get some results. You become happy someday. Then you become, you know, sad some other day. So that, uh, that kind of uh, thing or that feeling I liked. So that time I thought I should do my PhD. So that's why actually after spending uh, two or three years at ICDB, then I realized uh, I should do actually PhD and I should really become a researcher. So it was not very early in my career. I would say it was more like middle or it was late of my career that I thought I should become a researcher actually. Lovely. So you are one of our those researcher celebrity, which are very rare, that who have tasted, tried themselves well enough before committing towards a PhD. So now then the question is, what was your motivation to join a PhD program in Germany? Okay. So when I was at ICGB Delhi, I kind of liked protein structure biology field, protein biochemistry field. And that time I decided I will do my PhD in protein structure biology. And while working there, I was my my first priority was doing protein structure biology of membrane proteins. So that time I was specifically looking for protein structure biology, but with the, you know with membrane protein as, as the center. Then I was looking for PhD position anywhere in India and abroad. In India, the problem at that time was with membrane protein structure biology was there were there were very few labs and we don't have that we didn't have that much infrastructure that time and also membrane protein structure you will need lots of uh, money basically mm -hmm. and when i was looking for position i then i found uh, through online these portals there was a new scientist who was starting his group in belgium that he was looking for a phd student and he was looking for somebody who has some experience, you know, protein purification, who has done some uh, crystallization experiment. Then I realized, okay, I think this this will look really, this really fits me actually. By the time I have purified one protein, I have crystallized it, I have determined its structure. So I thought I have done solvent protein and then to do now membrane protein to do more challenging, this will be the right opportunity. Then, Based on that, I also discussed with other people. Then they said, okay, you know, VIB is a very good institute. And my field supervisor that time, 
he had a very good publications in member protein structure biology field so then i decided okay i should really apply and i should really go and do my phd over there so after i ap- applied he called me we had couple of interviews and he was also very happy that i have some experience uh, and being his new lab i would be very useful so that was the time actually then we decided that oh, i decided that i should go and do my phd over there absolutely well said so i have heard like i am not a protein biochemist but i have heard that if you are planning to do a phd in any kind of protein you should never touch membrane proteins and that is really something which you really wanted to do so now i have a question for you that what were the questions or thoughts before joining the group for your phd so after my masters i have already spent two and a half three years at icdb and another thing which i found in india is you have age limits for everything so one thing which i was thinking let's say if i go and do my phd abroad and if it takes 6 7 years then i would i become too old to get any job back in india or would i be too old to apply for any funding so that was actually the first question i asked my that time prospective phd supervisor how long will you take to give me a phd and being naive i told him i want to do phd in 3 years so that was my first uh, thinking you can say that duration of phd second thing which i was thinking is like how is the country because when you are in india you always uh, hear good or bad things abroad that you may face racism you may have some discrimination so that that thing i, I was also a bit concerned another thing was as i said member protein structure biology is quite uh, expensive and difficult i knew my future boss will be having some expertise in member protein but will he have money and infrastructure so that thing was also coming into my mind if there will be enough funding available to finish my phd so honestly speaking i asked this question to my boss that time i asked him how many years will you take how will the environment because now you are taking indian student and what is the real culture over there because i had no idea and what will be the you know what is your funding actually i think i was quite blunt or probably naive <laughs> so then he replied uh, that the plt will take almost 5 years so he was very clear to me that you can work on the bench for four and a half years something like this and then you can another 6 months you can take your to write your thesis finish up your you know pending experiments so 5 years will be a good timeline and then he said we are very open vib is a very multicultural institute and everybody even actually there were a uh, few indians who were there to the pi in in vib for so funding wise he said we don't have any problem with the money so he had quite big grants from vib uh, funding and then he also had other some grants so he he kind of assured me but when as long as you are doing your phd we will support you we will fund your research don't worry about money don't worry about your duration i can assure you if you will do good work you will get a good phd so that kind of uh, cleared all my doubts and you know all my questions and then i said okay i think i am ready to go absolutely and this is something which we always try to tell our next generation of researchers here that whenever you are approaching any advisor or supervisor the, then you know if you are considering them to pursue phd so these are the things which as dr pravin just said that few of the things which again you can prioritize for your situation based thing like timeline for phd there should be a duration fixed okay there is always plus minuses but you should not keep it an open ended question there should be a timeline well defined before committing towards it second one important thing which dr pravin also mentioned is about the country when if you are moving out of india if you are in india still there are small hellos that if you are moving from north to south south to north there are language barriers some cultural differences but when you are moving from country to a different country then it is all another a different ball game because in india you can travel like very frequently you know and you can be in contact with your friends but when you are in out of india 
then the time zones are different probably depending on which time zone you are you might not be able to talk to your family friends very uh, often so this brings a cultural shock which is very important point to consider before joining any lab outside india and then the research based questions like the funding the expertise of your pi and also the infrastructure available in there so in some cases what has been seen that if there are not infrastructures but you can see through the publication that they have collaborations where you can bridge your uh, uh, you know research and you can be part of multiple collaborative interdisciplinary teams that is very important to consider before committing so uh, dr praveen when after uh, so let's take some time to share your experience of your phd how that went well in the beginning you know it was a cultural shock as you rightly pointed out even in india when you move north south south north you you feel something but when you go abroad and for me it was the first time i was going abroad and then you don't even know the language so <laughs> Belgium, especially Brussels, actually was a French-speaking area in Belgium mainly. And but my university was Dutch-speaking, Flemish-speaking. So it was even more difficult because I was I was in a tiny pocket of Dutch-speaking area within a bigger area which was French speaker. Then which was resting on a even bigger area which was only Dutch speaker. so you know it it was island within island and island like that so the language shock was the first one which i i like say you can say experience in the in the first instance it, itself second thing is the food cultural wise the food is different and i had no idea how to cook and then third thing is you know the weather and everything so i took some time you know to first to adjust all these things so after i got used to you know all these things then you can focus more on science first year you know just went just just like that you you just don't feel it that it's uh, one year is gone then suddenly you realize actually you are in second year of your phd and as i was saying in the beginning itself member body structure is uh, quite unique and quite difficult so throughout my phd we had you know challenges i had to travel a lot because of uh, my work and for data collection and that's where i i always felt that the role of your phd supervisor become very crucial so in theory actually if you, if you look at my whole phd for four years i almost had no result So after four years, if you will ask me, uh, Parvin, do you think you will finish your PhD in five years? I would be very skeptic. But then uh, my boss was very supportive. So every year, so whenever we go to synchrotron, so synchrotrons are like you know large X-ray diffraction facilities where we go and collect our data. So as soon as you put your sample, you will know that your sample is good or bad. and in case of uh, you know memory proteins it might be possible that 99% of the time your samples are not behaving good so you are not collecting good data at any way and you are going each time every two months three months you work there for 24 by 7 and then once in a while you get discouraged that why am i doing it what is the purpose what is the use will i get a phd or not and that's where actually as i said the role of your pl supervisor become very very crucial so during such trips he he used to also come along with me sometimes and then i would have these same doubts and i would ask him and he used to be like don't worry parveen one day or another day you will get it and the work you are doing is very fantastic work the day you finish i'm sure you will get a good publication you will get a good recognition so do not worry so just keep your focus do not change your focus you have to just do it and you will do it so that kind of you know always encourage me and i always kept me on path so 
while I was finishing my PhD only, then we got all the results and everything was done. Then in the hindsight, you know, everything looks that it was tailor made or it was supposed to happen like that only. But during, I would say, third and fourth year, it was quite difficult. But because he was also good, then we also had uh, very nice lab members there who were, the, who were always, you know, supportive. And then I had lots of friends in Belgium. So overall, everything was, uh, you know, very supportive environment. And that kind of, you know, eats the pain of that PhD. But then at the end, everything was well. So as we say, if the end is well, everything is well. Absolutely. So that's how my PhD went. Nice. So with this uh, brief, you know, explanation or the sharing the journey. So there were moments probably, as you also mentioned, that there was a lot of discouragement. There was moments when you were thinking that, okay, how will I be able to complete my PhD? If at all, it will be. Because so during those times when you are thinking about quitting the PhD or facing all these troubles and also when you have such a de well-defined timeline, when you already discussed it with your supervisor before joining the PhD and now after spending two, three years, you see that nothing is moving as per your satisfaction levels. What do you suggest to our uh, students who are doing, who are pursuing their PhD now and are in the same situation? So one thing which I I feel is the, the very important is like, uh, what do you want to do? So I always say doing PhD is like doing a mini marriage. Because you are bound to a place for next five years, six years, something like that. You are going to have the same, you know, boss. You will have your lab mates who will be there always. So... As in the marriage, like if you get any of that uh, wrong, whether you spend one year or five years, it is going to be difficult. Luckily, in my case, everything went well. So, but in meanwhile, in doing, there will be some moments, uh, research wise, that it will be very difficult. So, one thing is, I would say, just keep your focus. Think what do you want to do in your life? If you want to do your PLT, if you want to do research, these kind of moments will come again and again and again. You cannot avoid them. Life cannot be happy all the time. You cannot have positive results, you know, each day, every day, every week like that. So you need to maintain that focus and that persistence, I would say resilience. And also, second is, like your, as I said, your supervisor and your lab mates, they play a very key role during those times. So if if you have chosen your lab well, and even if your project is not going well, I would say you would still be fine. So that's one of the things which I also tell other people now to new students as well, like uh, don't join a lab just based on you know number of publications. Okay, this lab is having so many number of publications, I'll join that for PhD. Oh, this lab, this PI has uh, these things, that thing. I would say you should go and talk to that lab persons first. How how are they responding? Because if you will go to your PI, he will talk only science. Okay, we are doing this project, that project. But you also need to go and talk with, let's say, those lab members. Because with them, you will be spending, you know, 8 to 10 hours every day. And feel for it, like, do you think those uh, people will be good enough? Or if if they are the people, you know, with whom you want to spend uh, increased time every day. So this will be difficult if you are in a, you know, foreign country. But if you can do that uh, within India, I think that will be great. So that you do, I would say, like a pre-lab joining screening. Yeah. But anyway, let's say if you have joined the lab, and then second analogy I do is, uh, you know, investing in a bad bank or bad stock. Let's say you join the lab and you, things are very tough. Then you think, then you check your pro and cons. For example, if the lab is really bad, your PI is very bad, your project, your sure is not going anywhere. 
you have spent three years. Then you ask your question, does it matter if I spend another three to four years in the same lab, will I go somewhere? Will I reach something or not? If the answer is no, just could that lab go somewhere else? You can start your PhD again, no problem. If you think, with, again, quoting by two to three years, you will get whatever you wanted, then just work, focus, don't think anything else. Same thing, if you buy a bad stock, no matter what, the bad stock will remain bad and you will never get your investment back. Same thing, if the lab is bad, PI is bad, product is bad, you will not get your good PhD. So just dump that one, move on. If everything else is good, I would say just stay invested, put your more time, focus a little bit more, and then get your work done. That's it. This is the perfect way, and I don't think that anyone can put it the best, better than this one, because either it is everything is going fine, or if nothing is going fine. And this is one thing which I would like to take a moment now. So this is something which is coming up in India now more often than it used to be in the previous, like at least the last decade. Now student, students after spending three or five years are actually quitting their PhDs. Probably as you mentioned, these are the situations. But what are the other circumstances which they should stand tall and you know complete their PhDs, make the time worth? Because in sad instances, there has been seen like now there have been suicides about for the PhD students, which absolutely should not happen. And you already gave a very great answer to that to keep them motivated. If it works, then how you, person has to decide that what are the things going. But what we know about research is the amount of stress it brings. When everyone is in their healthy state of mind, probably it is easy to take decisions. But when if somebody is going through very tough time, when they are not able to decide what exactly is good, what path should they take? Yes, so I was mentioning your lab member, your lab mates play a very crucial role in that one. So it's you, you can say it in two different ways. So some people they don't want to have any you know friendship or closeness in the lab or uh, let's say work environment that is also good. Some people they really want you know because they are spending a lot of time in the lab. So they want to have good relations with their colleagues and things like that. So if you have your, if you have some some people in your lab who will be in a similar situation because environment will be same. For that, again, it will be the same lab, same PI. For you, it will be the same thing. So then when you are in the same environment, you will try to behave similar and also you will have similar kind of stress. So then it's like, you know, helping each other out. So if you get those kind of people, those kind of friend, or I would say good colleague, it is, this is also good. Or in other case, let's say you don't have that many people to talk to at workplace, but let's say you have very good friends outside. Because once in a while you need to take, you need to vent out this, uh, let's say stress, this depression, these problems, you need to talk to somebody. So if you have someone outside, I would say, please talk to that person. Even if that person is, let's say, non-scientific or not from your field even, because sometimes what happens is uh, after you say things, no, you become very light. Yes. Then, then you think, okay, it is not as big problem as I was thinking initially. So I have seen in cases where that worked. Mm -hmm. So I have seen with the people, with my colleague who had problems, they came and then they just told me. And then they realized, okay, probably they were just overthinking it. So in those cases, that also works. Scientifically, uh, sometimes what happens is some of your projects, they just don't work. No matter how hard you try. So in that scenario, one thing which you can do is you can always go and talk to your supervisor. 
you say look i have tried all this this project 10 20 different times and this is not what we were expecting and we are not getting anything you know publishable because in science these days everything depends on the publication in many cases what i have seen is that your boss will say okay fine we will do some other project they will still try to rescue your plt or they will still try to do you know find alternative ways but you need to go and talk to your boss okay this is the problem sometimes uh, as a pi you don't even know that there is some problem or the student is suffering so so if you just go and talk to your boss that will also help then third thing is what do you want to do in your life if you got into plt by accident like okay i had done msc i got csi there i got a plt admission i am doing my plt or i got a plt abroad i am doing my plt then if you are having problem that will also give you time to you know retrospect you like what do you want to do do you really want to do plt or not do you want to be a researcher or not if at that that time if you think that this is not probably the you know my domain it's not my cup of tea then doesn't matter you just quit science do something else if you are good you will find you know employment very easily you get a job or you can deal till you can have your own startup so these are the few things i would say if you are you know when the going is tough you can either go this way or that way this is very important and i think uh, we share the same emotion at empowering science foundation to help the students the researchers whatever they want to do only thing they have to make sure is that what makes them happy because if some things makes you happy as uh, you clearly said that there will be the litmus test that the stress the discouragement which research brings to you that is the time when you realize that if is it just by mistake you have fallen into phd which i have heard a lot of stories people enrolled in phd without thinking that what is waiting for them in the future but that's life in general for every other human being also researchers are no exception to that but this is very important that these are the times when you decide that okay how committed you are and one of the things which i often says about uh, dr t adak he says that phd actually trains you for your lifetime so that is when it shows that how once you have committed to something how devoted you are to make it work fulfill either it is marriage or relationships or anything else yeah. like uh, dr praveen just mentioned so now we'll take some moment to move out of the phd and then when you were done with your phd you got this fellowship and you have done a lot of like you have received a lot of fellowships so if you can guide our researchers the where, what at what stage of their phd and even uh, post phd they should be keeping an eye for different fellowships and how does that help them in longer run so whether you are in india or abroad these days there are lots of post doc fellowship they are open from let's say your last year of phd minimum requirement there is that you have submitted your thesis so again what one main thing there will be is what do you want to do your post doc what do you want to do after your phd let's say if you have identified some institute some pi where you want to go and do your post doc whether in india or abroad then your work is done quite easily so in most of the those application what they need is one proposal one grant proposal basically like what is what you are going to do after your phd your host lab and your cv that is the basic minimum requirement some of the internationally complete uh, let's say grant application there you need to have good publication record so i'll tell you with my example itself so my paper my publication came a bit late after my plt my main publication so when i applied for one fellowship in the same project in the same lab i was not selected because i did not have that publication yet so 6 month later 
for Ambo Fellowship, when I got my publication done, it was accepted actually, it wasn't even published. So when I just wrote in my application that this paper is accepted, then I got the fellowship. So you see that just having that big publication made a big difference uh, in getting fellowship or not. So that crucial, as I said, I was in earlier as well, publication these days, uh, they are very important. And also where are you publishing, it also imp becomes important. So it is the same person applying with the same project in the same lab. But six months earlier, you don't even select that person. Or you don't even shortly that person for interview. And then six months later, you are giving that person fellowship because now you got that publication. So you, your publication record during your PhD becomes very important. So try to do good science so that, so that you can good, uh, good publication. Second thing is uh, your post. So after you finish your PhD, when you go, uh, let's say abroad or you go to a different lab, I would say select something new. Just don't do exactly the same thing which you have done in your PhD. So again, in my case, uh, I had done outer membrane protein during my PhD. I have done soluble protein when I was in India. So I want to do inner membrane proteins then. Then I applied for labs where they were working on inner membrane proteins. So you know, you, you are trying to add flavors in your CV, different kind of things uh, for your CV. So do something sim similar. So funding agencies, they really like that actually. What they want is, if we will put another two to three years in this person, is that person gain, going to gain a little bit more, you know, expertise? Or is he uh, going to, you know, become a better researcher by acquiring new skills? So also change of the lab, as I said, you should not apply from the same lab or same institute. After your PhD, you should uh, move in my, in my honest opinion, you should change the country. If you are in India, if you don't want to change the country, I would say at least change the state. If you are in Karnataka, apply somewhere in, uh, let's say in Maharashtra or Delhi or somewhere else. So that, that will also, you know, give you chance to mature as a researcher. You will meet more people, different people. And again, the funding agencies, they also prefer. They have to be movement of researcher from one place to another place. So your movement, your change of lab is important. Your publication record becomes very important. Your host. So whatever you are proposing in your grant proposal, it should match your host expertise. You should not propose something which that lab has not done ever. You can propose let's say new protein or new stuff, but that technique cannot be totally different, cannot be drastically different than your host lab expertise. So you cannot, for example, you cannot, ex I will put a structure biologist. If you want to come and work with me, you cannot just say, I want to work on bacterial genetics because the funding agency knows that uh, this host lab does not have that expertise. They may also not have a required infrastructure. So then if we will give that this fellowship, it may not even work. So that expertise should align very well with your grant proposal. So if you have these, these combinations sort out, uh, let's say clearly, then, then it is fine. In India now you have uh, lots of funding, for example, the one which I had like welcome early career fellowship. You also have now inspire faculty fellowship. There are also now uh, special calls for women researchers. And they also call for women researchers who had a career break even. So there are, there are multiple funding, uh, let's say, opportunities within India. And if you want to go abroad again, there is Marie Curie Fellowship. There is uh, the same which I had, Embo Long Term Fellowship. And then each country has their own fellowship in Europe. I don't know much about uh, US. But then Europe, every country will have their own, uh, let's say, port of fellowship. And if you have done your PhD uh, in that country, you will know actually more about those port of fellowships. So then you, you need to choose where you want to go, what area you want to work on, 
and you need to prepare while you are you know writing your thesis you cannot delay it you know you, you should not think that okay after i submit my thesis then i will think because minimum requirement is thesis submission so in theory as soon as you submit your thesis you can apply so while you are writing thesis i would say you should also look for your future perspective and you can always start emailing and you can always start preparing for your uh, postdoc applications and postdoc fellowships that will give you enough time to you know prepare everything absolutely and this is something which we always tell to our uh, young enthusiastic researchers that by the end of your either you are going to submit you should always have couple of options for your postdocs in your hand offers so that people are ready they are just waiting for you so that you can submit your thesis and join their lab because you have made those networking connections during the scientific conferences meetings when you are meeting these international people and if you already have sorted some or picked some labs which you want to join and the pi happened to be present in the same uh, meeting you should always take time with them uh, go to their talks ask questions throw your ideas to them and then your interest that you want to join their lab for postdoctoral training and you know that's how it all starts so now keeping the time uh, in frame we would like to ask dr praveen that when you were looking for phd and now when people are seeking phd in your lab one thing which has not changed and one thing which has changed totally so one thing which has not changed is that uh, how long will i take to do my phd mm -hmm. i now have currently two phd students and when i interacted with them first time they had the same question mm -hmm. how long will i take and can we finish in 3 years <laughs> then i i then i recalled the same thing which i did with my <laughs> phd supervisor and then i gave the same answer i said look we have everything to do your phd but i want you to work on the bench again for four four and a half years and then again you can take six months to write your thesis but if you if you are very good and if you are done with the, all your phd work publication within three years then it's up to you if you want to spend another 2 years in in the lab you can do that or if you want to leave after your 3 years of your plt you can do that as well we will set a goal if the goal is achieved within 2 years even and if you have fulfilled all the requirement of the university and you know funding agency i don't have any problem so that question i think uh, did not change much people still want to do their plt you know as soon as possible like the next day itself and i i had the same same thing so the thing which i would say might have changed little bit is like ever saying no like in india that is the social infrastructure because that time when i was thinking that i should not do this uh, in india then i should go really abroad i think india now that has uh, changed quite drastically in last 5 10 years we do have now a good infrastructure in different places and very good facilities um, at multiple places within india of course that can be that can always be increased we can always argue that so that i think uh, it's it's slightly changed now it's changed for better i would say no absolutely i must say this and this is the time when we criticize uh, infrastructure in india a lot but this is the time where i would take this uh, moment to say that in india we have so many state of art facilities in all the different aspects of research which are not available in so many other countries outside or are very you know comparable even to some of the best in the world so we have moved a long path we are working on it and with this networking which we so we are trying to build this uh, community of researcher celebrity for all the researchers who are facing any challenge in their research or want to network with uh, our researcher celebrities either they can write 
directly to them or they can write to empowering science foundation and then we can put you in touch with our researcher celebrities let's make it build let's make it stronger let's make india shine as always with this we will say uh, the last words from uh, dr praveen goel as word of wisdom for our researchers well i i don't say words of wisdom but i would say like uh, as i kind of maintained throughout my interaction that uh, research doing research is not an easy job so you you do your masters you have a flavor if you feel for it please go for it but when you go for it go for full heart yeah. there is no half measures and then once you are there just uh, keep going even things uh, look difficult but i'm sure they will become you know once you get the result you will be very happy you will be very satisfied and the joy you will feel will be different so with that i would say if you if you really like doing research if you enjoy it please please do it yeah absolutely with this we'll say to all the viewers that uh, as dr praveen says if you enjoy it enjoy and never do it halfway give your full throttle and uh, keep doing it keep enjoying your research and if you want to write you can follow dr praveen and uh, also can contact us with this we'll say thank you dr praveen for sharing the experience and motivating few more enthusiastic researchers for their future yeah thank you thank you for the interaction yeah thank you